In over 35 years, the National Italian American Sports Hall of Fame has inducted more than 250 sports figures, including Joe Montana, Joe DiMaggio, Dan Marino, and Mike Piazza. Tonight, the National Italian American Sports Hall of Fame welcomes the class of 2013. And here are the inductees. Francis Hank Loricella was widely known as Mr. Everything during one of the most prominent stretches in University of Tennessee football history. By his 1950 sophomore campaign, Loricella called all the plays as the tailback, and he also played safety. A native of Harahan in Jefferson Parish, Louisiana, Loricella lettered in four sports at Holy Cross High School in New Orleans. That led him to Tennessee and General Robert Neyland, who was one of the few college coaches running the single wing offense. From there, Loricella took off, and in the 1951 Cotton Bowl, his 75-yard run against Texas led the Volunteers to a 20-14 victory, an undefeated season, and a national championship. In his three years at Tennessee, Loricella helped the Volunteers to a 28-4-1 record, running for 13 touchdowns and passing for 16 others. He also played in the NFL in 1952 with the Dallas Texans before serving two years in the U.S. Army. When he returned from Korea, Loricella became general partner and manager of the Loricella Land Company, a family real estate operations and home builder in New Orleans, a role he continues to serve today. In 2008, Hank and his wife Betty were honored at the University of Tennessee with the dedication of the Hank and Betty Loricella Center at Neyland Stadium. He brings in his number one pitcher, Johnny Antonelli, who had gone the full distance in the second game of the series. But Antonelli gets his man. A five-time All-Star and 1954 National League Pitcher of the Year, Johnny Antonelli enjoyed success on the mound during his 12 seasons in Major League Baseball. The proud son of Italian immigrants, Antonelli was born in Rochester, New York. During high school in 1948, his father, Augie, organized a baseball game for the semi-pro Rochester Stars, in which John threw a no-hitter, striking out 17. The next day, Antonelli was signed by the Boston Braves. After serving in the U.S. Army, Antonelli came back to the Braves in 1953 when they were in Milwaukee, and the following year was traded to the New York Giants. In 1954, Antonelli won 21 games, posted a league-best 2.3 earned run average, was selected to an All-Star game, and led the Giants to a National League pennant and a World Series championship. He started and won Game 2 of the World Series against the Indians, came in to pitch Game 4 as a reliever, helping sweep Cleveland away. Upon retirement, Antonelli started the Antonelli Firestone Tire Company in his hometown of Rochester. His business grew to 28 stores in 1994 before he sold the company and began an active retirement. In 2008, the Italian Civic League of Rochester presented Antonelli with their Lifetime Achievement Award. With 15 years of dedication as a Major League Baseball umpire, Steve Palermo was ranked as the number one ump in the American League in 1991 by Sporting News. Prior to joining the MLB umpire development program in 1972, Palermo studied education at Norwich University, Leicester Junior College, and Worcester State College. Palermo's umpiring career began in the minors where he spent five seasons before making his Major League debut in 1977. He worked the 1983 World Series, four ALCS, and the 1986 All-Star Game. He was also behind the plate when Yankees pitcher and National Italian American Sports Hall of Famer Dave Rigetti threw a no-hitter on the 4th of July. Sadly, on July 7, 1991, Palermo and a couple of friends were dining after a Texas Rangers game. Two of the restaurant's waitresses were being robbed in the parking lot. In an effort to apprehend the assailants, Palermo suffered a bullet wound to his spinal cord, resulting in instant paralysis from the waist down. He was told he'd never walk again, and his umpiring career was over. With overwhelming support and immense fortitude, Palermo defied the odds against him and is walking again. In 1992, Palermo began the Steve Palermo Foundation for Spinal Cord Injuries, and in 1994 received the Arthur Ashe Courage Award from ESPN. Prior to accepting his role as supervisor of MLB umpires in 2000, Palermo served as the special assistant to the baseball commissioner for five years and a color analyst for the Yankees for two. Currently the honorary chairman of the Mid-America Games, Palermo also works as a motivational speaker. Because all we um, strive, so you can be the champ, and we just made it. That was the destiny.
A proponent of the peekaboo style of boxing, Castamato earned a reputation as one of the most forthright and honest men in the sport. He trained Floyd Patterson and Jose Torres to world titles and was instrumental in the career launch of Iron Mike Tyson. Born in 1908 in the Bronx of New York, Gus learned to fight in the streets during a brief career as an amateur boxer, and at age 22, he opened the Umpire Sporting Club, a boxing gym intended to develop young fighters with Jack Barrow at the Gramercy Gym. In 1949, D'Amato began training 14-year-old Floyd Patterson. Three years later, Patterson won gold at the 1952 Olympics in Helsinki. Four years from there, Patterson was the champion of the world. Cus then trained Jose Torres, who in 1965 at Madison Square Garden defeated International Boxing Hall of Famer Willie Pastrano to become the world light heavyweight champion. In 1980, a 14-year-old Mike Tyson was in a nearby reform school and also began training at Cus's gym. A special bond developed between the two. Cus took Tyson under his wing and even adopted him after Mike's mother passed away. Assisted by Teddy Atlas, D'Amato taught Tyson to start using a peekaboo style. And just a year after Cus adopted Mike, D'Amato passed away before seeing Mike Tyson become the youngest boxer ever to win the world title. As president and CEO of the Boston Red Sox, Larry Lucchino is a veteran of 35 years in Major League Baseball. A member of two Ivy League championship basketball teams, Lucchino graduated with honors from Princeton University and is a graduate of the Yale Law School. In 1974, he joined a Washington, D.C. law firm and five years later became the vice president and general counsel of the Baltimore Orioles, working his way through to becoming the president and CEO of the Orioles in 1988. From there, Lucchino bounced to San Diego, where in 1995 he became the Padres president and CEO and joined the Red Sox in 2002. In his 25 full seasons as president and CEO, his clubs have a winning record, have reached the postseason nine times, and have won four pennants. Lokino has earned a legacy for creating ballparks that have transformed the ballpark's role in fan experience. His vision for the design of Oriole Park at Camden Yards, his leadership in bringing Petco Park to San Diego, and his efforts overseeing a 10-year-long project to preserve and protect Fenway Park have created a revolutionary ambiance responsible in part for the game's resurgence since 1992. Currently, Lokino is a board member of the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and is also on the board of Special Olympics International. Olchek busting at center ice, comes over the line, shooting, he scores! Hockey great Eddie Olchek played 16 seasons in the NHL, recorded more than 790 points in 1,031 career games with the Blackhawks, Maple Leafs, Jets, Rangers, Kings, and Penguins. He won a Stanley Cup in 1994 with the Rangers, but is a Chicagoland native growing up in Palos Heights. Olchek began his NHL career as an 18-year-old with his hometown Blackhawks in 1984, recorded 180 points in his first three seasons. He spent the next three years in Toronto and launched a career-high 42 goals during the 87-88 campaign. After retiring from the NHL in 2000, Olchek returned to the Pittsburgh Penguins to embark on a career as a broadcaster. From 2000 through 2003, he called games for Fox Sportsnet Pittsburgh, as well as ESPN and ESPN2. In 2003, Olchek moved down to the bench and became the head coach of the Penguins, lasting for two seasons before returning back to broadcasting and joining NBC. Beginning in the 06-07 season, Olchek came back home to serve as television color analyst for the Chicago Blackhawks, and in 2012 became the 16th Blackhawk elected into the United States Hockey Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, please congratulate the National Italian American Sports Hall of Fame Class of 2013.